Hello everybody, uh, welcome to our Every Tuesday Tap Room and today our topic will be 3 to 1 the cup rule and in real life and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, this is the banner that uh, you all should have seen because this is this was presented uh, on the where you were registering on the staff room and again welcome to the staff room where your host will provide you with a backup guideline as well as the comfortable way of handling your data and today's host is me uh, the next slide well, yeah, show my face. <laughs> this is not my best photo, but I think it's fine. So my name is Olis Boris. I'm a solutions engineer at Starwind uh, Star Software Incorporated. And uh, I really like this place, this shop. It provides me with a lot of opportunities. I like speaking with people. I like an opportunity to I speak to you guys to be a host of a tap room and I really hope everyone will have fun and we can keep going on and basically what we're going to talk uh, today about is uh, what is the best way to back up your data and why this is actually the only thing which which we'll be talking about here and I think this is really a very important part when uh, having any production system or running anything at all because uh, in case of you lose your data I mean all your job doesn't make any sense and those backups and Starwind in general we actually try to provide I mean try to make this never happen uh, and basically this topic, well, we'll, we'll talk about uh, how do we recommend performing a backup and, uh, and why. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is that we, and yeah, though it will also explain why is it called 3 to one backup rule. So the, the first thing of this rule is three and by three we actually mean and we recommend you having three copies of your data and uh, also uh, this these three copies uh, they can be like anywhere it doesn't really matter where do they reside uh, it's it can be your one rate array it can be high availability or redundancy with three nodes since like replications are backups in some case I mean in some some way I mean obviously when if something happens to your w single rate array which has three copies of that data that wouldn't be very great because you'll lose all three of them and this is actually why our backup rule is not is not finished on number three the second thing and maybe like one of the most important ones is to uh, after you have three copies of data on one raid it will be also a great idea to have another copy on a different media so we uh, prefer I mean we, we suggest keeping uh, the data in two different formats because one format outlives the other one and as an example uh, usually disk from the read uh, they depend uh, I mean they statistically depend on each other because usually when you build your read uh, they, the disks over there are almost always bought in the same time from the same uh, vendor and I mean often even in one place so and after you face a one disk failure there is a, a high possibility that 
you know, the, the other disk will fail soon. So keeping that data on different media, that will be a very great idea. And by different media, I mean like different format as well, like hard drive, type library, DVD disks, maybe like something else, but just keeping them in two different like ways. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the second topic, uh, I will give you five minutes to ask them and we'll move on. Because the first one for me it was pretty straightforward, like having three copies. And the second part is a bit more complicated. So if you have any, please. It looks like no one does, so I believe we can move on. And uh, also, the other thing I'd like to say, well, since we are here talking about Starwind as well, not only about uh, backups, because like Starwind is not really backup-oriented software, I can say that uh, Starwind uh, also could provide you with those keeping backups on two different media because Starwind does have a virtual hard drive which can be later written on a physical one if needed. I mean on the different physical one. Uh, we have a virtual tape library uh, which actually uh, works better than writing it on a physical tape library right away because from, I mean, writing from a physical drive to, a, I mean, writing from your production environment to a physical tape library, it's pretty hard and it takes a while. So there would be a great idea to uh, set up a virtual tape library on a, uh, even on your production system, but usually not on something uh, apart from it. And then uh, performing that transformation from a virtual tape library to a physical one. And as for optical disk drives, Starwind also has them. Uh, those are not really popular, but some people do prefer them, and we can provide you with them. Uh, that's actually everything about the second part. And the first part, which is the third actually in the order, but since uh, we call it three to one, this will be the first part. The first part is, uh, well, talks about keeping a one copy of data offsite. And by saying offsite, I mean like really as far away as possible, like preferably in another city, uh, maybe in another state, in another country, or, I mean, even better if it was possible to keep it in another continent. If you make it, your data is safe. And you might have a question, why would you do so? And there is a great explanation for it, because uh, any disaster which can happen on your main site, even, even if you have like six copies of your data or even 10 or like any amount, you, I mean, you can always think about a situation one that all can get corrupted. Like with a big and catastrophic disasters, such as earthquake, 
and maybe another unpleasant event which may destroy buildings or even like data centers can burn down or I mean anything can happen to your physical place where you reside and that will cause you to lose any amount of backups you make and for this I mean in case of such situation we highly recommend keeping an a one backup off-site and uh, I mean as far away as possible and to do so uh, we do have a couple of uh, recommendations about it the first one uh, which comes to my mind since I'm a Starwind engineer is Starwind asynchronous replication this is a uh, well Starwind actually has two types of replication one is the active active one which is a synchronous one which is uh, used for clustering and so on and for highly avail uh, high availability and the second one is the asynchronous replication. This replication is done not instantly like you write on one drive and then everything instantly appears on the other side. No, it works different. Uh, you write an information and then after a while it gets copied somewhere far far away. And also uh, like what is the trick here? I mean many people have like similar way to do so many companies vendors they can like provide you with such way but in Starwind case there is a trick so uh, usually when doing such replication people need the same uh, the same server on that offsite as your production one and that's not really cost efficient because uh, like the chance that your server room or your office will get destroyed by the earthquake are pretty slim we have to be honest so buying another production server which has uh, which has like uh, a lot of power inside it and costs like 5k bucks why would you do it I mean this is really not cost efficient and in Starwind uh, this is the trick in Starwind you can uh, place anything there so it will be a you know JBOD with a with a motherboard inside it and with some kind of AOS oh I mean uh, Windows OS because Starwind is installed on Windows only so there there will be staying a really really cheap and just just a simple server which can work with uh, average amount of data and everything will be replicated and in case if something happens that backup can be used to restore your system and everybody's happy uh, this is as our solution also uh, you could use uh, VM backup uh, I almost certain that every every one of you heard about it and also yeah the virtual tape library you can also uh, copy it uh, in another place so this is actually it about the 3 to 1 backup rule but I would later on like to talk to you about like 1 2 3 nodes as well because this is also interesting part and from like I mean Starwind side but for now I would like you to ask me any questions if you have any I'll give it a couple of minutes and we'll go on please
Okay, like it looks like nobody has any questions. And since we were talking about replication, copying data, data and keeping it safe, I would also like to talk about the amount of style and notes. Because this is quite an important part, uh, talking about the third uh, third step in the one to, uh, in the in the three two one backup rule. So well, we were saying that uh, keeping a three copies of data with uh, three way mirroring is is good, and this is required by Starwin. And uh, I would explain you why that, that is even better and. Uh, cost efficient comparing to two nodes and two-way mirroring. This is why. So a two-way synchronous mirroring, this configuration, um, my, I mean it requires storage redundancy on the nodes obviously. So for that storage redundancy, uh, rate 10 is recommended because it's quite fast and it is redundant since it has a lot of drives inside of it and two of them can stop working but will still be fine. Uh, taking uh, into account that each storage node uh, only has 50% uh, usable capacity with rate 10 Synchronous mirroring makes the further dividing of those 50% by half in the uh, of uh, taking it by half of the storage capacity. So actually, uh, you get 20% uh, used as a usable capacity. And here you'd probably say, well, if uh, there is uh, such uh, like disk space eat up, why wouldn't we use RAID 5 and 6? And that would be a great question and I would say that they are actually also can be used. However, it is not really recommended because of high probabil probability of disk failing and while rebuilding uh, RAID 5 and the uh, load uh, and the low write performance of RAID 6 will actually, they won't bring your production down, but they will basically uh, make it unusable because the write performance will be horrible. And this is why three nodes are better because uh, this configuration with the three nodes, it doesn't really require uh, any storage redundancy since three-way synchronous mirroring already uh, already ensures the required level of data protection. And therefore, you can uh, either uh, you can use either JBot or uh, RAID zero for performance. Synchronous mirroring between three storage nodes result in 33% usable capacity, thus provides a higher level of utilization compared to two-way synchronous mirroring. And this is actually what I'd like to say. Uh, making a RAID 0 and 3 node replication, I would say this is much, much, uh, I mean way efficient, way more efficient than doing it in two node setup. Because even if calculating it this way, I think uh, buying a storage in a RAID 0 for two nodes, uh, for I mean in a RAID uh, 10 for two nodes, and you'll have two physical hosts, and a lot of drives which will make a RAID 10. This is uh, more expensive than making the uh, almost same capacity, but uh, I mean, eliminating those drives and purchasing another node, as well as much more amount of production uh, can be run on those three nodes because, because that uh, environment is much more powerful. I mean, uh, there is a lot of 
there is uh, there is a lot of performance. Uh, I'm sorry. So they have like triple RAM, triple CPU, triple motherboard, and so on and so on. And I think that's a lot better comparing it to two nodes. With this part of the presentation, I'm finished, and I would I would uh, very much like if I I would ask you to ask me some questions because I like answering questions, and I think that not everything what I said was clear. And if you have any questions, please ask them and I will gladly provide you with an answer. Okay, uh, Stefan here is sent a great question saying what is necessary to have replication to have a replication scenario like the passive replication in Hyper-V3. Uh, I'm not really sure what I means Hyper-V3 in this case, but uh, to I believe you were asking about a synchronous replication and uh, to have a, a synchronous replication you need to have at least a one gigabit link which goes to that host where you are planning to replicate your data to and you need to have a machine which is capable of uh, of backupping all your production data and uh, you need a Windows Server OS to install Starwind on it and configure the asynchronous replication. I hope I've provided you with the answer. If you have any remarks, I would uh, make my answer a bit better if I can. Uh, actually, uh, what do you really mean by your explanation belongs only to direct attached storage? Uh, yes, Starwind software works on uh, core servers and works great. But the only thing is that uh, when running a Starwind on a core server, there is a trick that uh, Starwind should be, uh, well, you install Starwind there, you fire up the service on both hosts or on one host, depending on what your, I mean, what configuration would you like to have? And then you get your laptop or maybe like any computer which has uh, Windows OS on installed on it, you install Starwind Management Console on it, and then you connect to those servers. And Starwind part is configured from the GUI, but on another computer. And this also like 
this thing. It works also for the any other configuration because many people they really worry about uh, like their storage health and they have a lot of monitoring tools and from Starwind's side first of all we have a resource monitor which shows you the amount of IO and also shows you the amount of random access memory. I believe there is a throughput and output in terms of networking as well but this is not what I was going to say. I was going to say that even like sitting, sitting at home if you have a laptop, you could easily type in the IP address of those servers and connect to them and check for their health. Like, And I think that's great. Also, in Starwind, we have a... I cannot say that this is like something very, very great and cool, but we have a email notification thing which you can configure. And if, there's, if there are any events happening with your... Uh, Sun hosts, you will get them uh, via email, and that's it. And you'll know that something went wrong or not, because that actually depends on how you configure it. You might configure it to send you only warnings and errors, or you can configure it to send you everything at all. There are no questions left, so we move to the end where I would like to say thank you to all of you. I really appreciate you coming on this tap room. I enjoy speaking to you guys and I would like to see you all on uh, our next tap room. Unfortunately, you, it won't be going on the next week because on the next, I mean, it will be, but not mine. On the next week, we'll have a German tap room and I believe the week after that there will be my tap room. I'm not sure about the topic. I will try to I'll try to figure out something interesting for you because because I like I like doing these tap rooms. I really wish you all luck and I wish you a great day, evening, morning. It depends on your time zone and thank you very much for coming on this tap room and take care guys see you around bye